Hello, everyone. My name is Luis Sentis. I'm a faculty uh, in aerospace engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, today we'll talk about our use of various types of actuators, but with special focus on bulk screw electric actuators. And this is where really my, my journey uh, uh, goes back as a, as a faculty. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, lots of the robots heavily focus on ball screw uh, actuation, but of course, exploring other areas and most recently uh, moving as well towards quasi direct drive and low gear ratio drive as well. Um, there's no question that those kind of new type of actuation, they have benefits, but also they pose questions in terms of uh, for instance, position bandwidth and, and other important uh, parameters. And also I want to thank uh, in advance Aptronic, who has produced many of the robotic systems and actuators that uh, we have used uh, uh, recently. So the company Mecha uh, was very influential to my lab uh, about 10 years ago when it was very active. The end-to-end -end embedded systems based on EtherCAD uh, were inspiring and allow us when we use versions of them um, to uh, you know, our own comms, our own bus communication, to handle larger uh, communication bandwidth. And then that was needed for the kind of computations that elastic actuators require, the kind of bandwidth of, uh, of, of communications. But of course, it was especially the elastic actuators that attracted our lab back in the time. In 2011, we were looking into building a research biped for the dynamic locomotion, and we hired Mecca to build it uh, for us. But then also we spent time uh, in a facility in San Francisco constructing the system and that allowed us to have a lot of uh, great uh, effects and insights. So when we started working with Mecha, IHMC had recently designed the MP2 uh, CS Elastic actuator uh, or the actuators for the MP2 robot uh, shown here in the lower right corner. And um, Mecha designed for us, for my lab, something along the same lines, shown in the upper left, upper left side. We felt there was much mechanical volume wasted in this type of designs. And then we went on to thinking about how to improve that significantly. But nonetheless, using Mecha CS Lasty Actuators brought us the result that we wanted. And we became one of the first labs in 2018, or among the first labs to achieve point feet dynamic locomotion. And along the way, we made several findings. One of them is that, despite looking really nice, but good core control does not result in high bandwidth position control. Quite the opposite, as torque feedback eliminates passivity, and achieving good damping through joint velocity feedback is very challenging. Therefore, the torque sensing capabilities of CS were only partially, partly useful to us. And this makes a, a case for direct drive or low gear ratio, providing, because then they can provide good proprioception, but still delivering adequate passivity, which is very important for position bandwidth. I will be curious, nonetheless, to hear about the position bandwidth of proprioceptive actuators from all the speakers and, and uh, attendees to this, to this uh, workshop. So, at UT, then we went on to design the UTC, yeah, that was 2012. And uh, uh, we, we decided this to reverse the drive. And then uh, uh, the, you know, drive the ball, the ball nut instead of the ball screw, and then have the ball nut go inside, the ball screw going inside the, the a piston like drive. And by, by doing this sort of uh, inside the strategy, we were able to uh, make the actuator much more compact. Here we can see it in perspective with a, you know, it achieve a 50% reduction in length and 30% reduction in width and uh, still keeping the range of motion and power density and everything, power kind of about the same as the other specs. And, uh, and that was a huge win for us for human center applications, you know, wearable robots and, and humanoid and things that they have to be very lightweight, obviously, and, and small volume. Nick Payne was the student that worked in this project, led this project, and uh, I like the way he used to put it, that the UTC a weight the same as a pineapple can lift a bear and can sense the force of the sparrow landing on the bear. And it was, you know, the, the kind of a catch, catchy um, uh, elevator pitch. And Nick built uh, a wealth of, um, of, um, of mechanical uh, variations 
uh, and test the uh, and test setups uh, um, doing his PhD and postdoc and, and then now in the company obviously and uh, in particular here are side to side versions of uh, UTC uh, without the springs and UTC uh, with the springs I guess that wouldn't be a serious elastic if it uh, didn't have a springs but it was for just for comparison the same configuration one with springs the other springs and the one with no springs had a piezoelectric for measuring forces and the conclusion of the studies that that were that that Elastic obviously has the benefits of shock absorption, but also is a great filter for um, for force feedback control. So these were like great force feedback systems, and um, and um, and, uh, and have allowed us to do great things. For instance, in um, exoskeletons, which uh, leverage a lot of the force uh, feedback. Um, uh, Nick finished uh, his PT and was looking into his next move. Do we discuss? If it was a commercial case for making a company around, around CS. And of course, there is always a case as we are seeing in other very successful companies like T-Motor or, uh, or Dynamics, Dynamics Select producers from, from Robotics. And that was the initial motivation behind uh, the company that we co-founded uh, called Aptronic uh, back in 2016. Uh, here you have Nick and I in various company events. So and nice. the future nice. system from Atronic uh, nice. here down below so that uh, my lab uh, used extensively. And um, it's, been, it's been a great, great journey. And, uh, and Atronic is the company now fairly, fairly, uh, fairly large uh, for, for, um, for being young. Um, and in particular, one of the things they started doing is commercializing uh, a refined version of the UTC. Uh, it was called the P170, and um, uh, Tronic sold dozens of these actuators. Um, and then it became really the basis later on for other um, more sophisticated designs, for instance, exoskeleton systems that uh, Tronic and, and us we, we use and we use for controls, um, but also for other prototypes of robotic systems. So especially the P170 allowed a company to take off and it spin, spin off several other uh, efforts. Embedded systems Adaptronic have since then been based on Ethercat communications, again, to handle the data streams required by CS. So my thought is that Ethercat uh, is um, it's a great protocol, um, but it's not for the, uh, the hard fainted um, because it's uh, much more elaborate, much more difficult to, to, uh, to master. Uh, compared to other protocols like Canvas, for instance. Of course, Canvas is very limited on the bandwidth, but um, you know, uh, if you're gonna incorporate it into your lab, um, you, you will need to spend time, definitely. And in the meantime, in 2012, we were hired by NASA uh, to help build Valkyrie. This was exciting uh, because we were uh, in this environment where great uh, space systems have been designed. Then we spend you know a year and a half, close to a year and a half, um, uh, uh, designing uh, low and high level controllers, uh, working with NASA to incorporate some of our mechanical ideas, and uh, and here is some of the things that came out out of this: uh, various types of actuators for Valkyrie. Um, some of them, you know, uh, focus on uh, based on kind of classical designs with with torsional springs, but then on the upper right side you see our UTC are now transformed into a NASA product, but the same idea with, uh, uh, with the ball screw and the, the ball nut being driven by the motor. Um, and, and, you know, Valkyries, the, there were several of them being produced and it's still a very lively project. Um, now, actually, one of my students is uh, involved in uh, producing um, uh, uh, technology for demonstrations uh, for combating terrorism and uh, an extensive use of uh, augmented uh, reality. Uh, so you can see here, Steven uh, Jorgensen on the white side um, and, and Rachel Gray on the left side um, in the next picture. And um, one of the use of humanoids is on testing ergonomic um, capabilities in ergonomic spaces. And then in space uh, setups is very important because uh, there is all that much space and then it has to be tested for uh, for humans, and it has to be um, uh, maintained for for human uh, uh, future missions. So the kind of morphology of humanoids 
uh, is important and drives and drives the, the type of actuators. For, in the, for, in, for instance, the, the upper body uses cylindrical in-runner actuators because they conform better to the slender appendages, whereas the lower body can have perfectly you know, direct drive um, if uh, we need it. And that's the direction we are currently going, like um, having uh, quasi direct drive on the lower body and then more slender kind of um, actuators on the upper body. Uh, more recently, my lab and Aptronic were developed like a cool uh, viscoelastic bolt screw actuators. Here's one named VLCA based on similar principles that we saw before, um, but using a, a, a viscoelastic rubber that provides both the elastic component and the friction. And this responds to our uh, need for, uh, for passivity, uh, mechanical passivity for achieving good position bandwidth. Um, and as, as you know, we made a point, uh, biped robots really rely on situation accuracy due to the small support area. So, um, um, it's going to be uh, uh, interesting to see uh, how how um, what are the ideal actuators uh, for um, and 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 you know the, the, the ideal mechanical passivity needed for uh, uh, for bipeds uh, and and in relation to direct drive. Here we can see a prototype of, of a leg uh, that uh, we co-built with Aptronic to test the, the performance of these uh, like a cool viscoelastic actuators. And of course, it deliver a great improvement of more than, than twice the, the improvement, the, the factor. And, um, um, uh, and then, you know, there is much to be said uh, on improving the thermal properties of actuators. And there is a lot of areas that are unexplored, uh, not only electric cooling, but uh, also use of unconventional materials for, for the windings, for instance, and electronic coatings um, that are much more thermally capable, but also at the amplifier level, which is another thermal consideration, is the use of power transistors that have less switching losses. So there is a lot of exciting areas of investigation there. So as, as this collaboration deepened, we also team up with not only Aptronic, but also with a historically black college here in UT Austin called Kirsten Tillotson. And we develop uh, line feed bipeds using these elastic uh, uh, actuators, allowing these benefits of more compact design, and uh, this kind of speeds of renewable solar automation. So changing gear, uh, here's a thought. One of the ways to employ more direct drives in the slender industrial arms, we said before that, because the, the volume is kind of thinner, right? Then, uh, you know, uh, our runner motors might not fit into the volume, except if they are really, you really require very little power. So um, Aptronic and, um, and then in a project with, uh, with my lab, um, uh, for the Navy, uh, we uh, went on to um, uh, explore the idea of high power to weight ratio um, actuation and uh, the design of a, an arm called Scorpio, which will employ uh, parallel springs and would achieve this, uh, this kind of benefit. And then this only, not only saves weight, but then the actuators are really small. So we, we scale down everything. Um, and that, that might, that's a form of quasi-direct drive, if you will. So Scorpio became extremely compliant as a result. Um, you can see here, Nick actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, just pushing it anywhere in, in the body with a really minimal power. Um, the arm is, you can lift this, these uh, boxes and kind of remain in the air with uh, almost no power whatsoever because of the technology. And uh, we did also testing on using just two small RC batteries here on the left side, um, very tiny batteries, and checking how long the arm would be moving around without losing, um, without draining the batteries. And that was an hour with these tiny batteries, with this you know, long arm, if you will, uh, human-sized arm. And that was uh, a huge um, discovery for us that, that this arm really was capable for being extremely portable it's almost like you know, put in a backpack and then you know deploy it with kind of two small batteries. Um, um, so uh, that that's that's it for for the arms, uh, an exciting avenue and uh, for 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 Aptronic. And uh, more recent work we performed in, regarding 
control and actuation with Aptronic has been on exoskeletons, combining a diversity of them, such as you know, linear liquid pool CS based on similar designs we've seen before, and, uh, and more conventional harmonic drive actuators with custom springs, for instance, for the heap uh, flexion abduction. But overall, to, to accomplish great force control and uh, operator uh, strength amplification. Uh, the Sagitt exoskeleton con uh, has 12 degrees of freedom, eight of them actuated in, uh, my student working with Aptronic as a, as a collaboration. It uses torque feedback to command torques proportional to the sense forces on various tasks, such as one in the lumar area, another lo one located on the feet. In addition, we need to employ loop shaping filters in order to maximize the amplification bandwidth while accounting for skeleton and human compliance. Really, even in the loop, uh, amplification is a great, a great field. Overall, this kind of actuation choice deliver the you know, excellent mobility and force transparency um, as we were looking for. And then later on, and then here I cannot really show anything, but Atronic went on into designing another version of this exoskeleton that used much more direct drive, much more um, uh, sophisticated um, mechanical um, uh, uh, reduction uh, that would, you know, reduce the weight significantly compared to this, this one. And uh, to finalize, uh, most recently we have uh, designed with Aptronic a new humanoid, it's called Draco, uh, focus on legged manipulation, this means walking and manipulating at the same time. And uh, the system was just turned on uh, a couple of weeks ago, so this is all I can show now. Um, the hip and knee flexion extension use outrun motors with low gear ratio to improve uh, speed, uh, swing speed. And the upper body also uses uh, T motors uh, for, for their cost and their ease of, of maintenance and, and, and so on and so forth. So um, we'll have more news on this system probably soon, but that is all for now. Thank you.